1962, my, my great-grandparents started this farm from sagebrush, and uh, in 1967, they were able to, to start planting the orchard, and they planted 20 acres of uh, cherries, uh, apples, pears, and uh, two, two rows of peaches for the neighbors uh, was the idea. What? And I, uh, through the 80s, that, that worked, but it was, it was getting kind of tough. In 1990, Dad decided to uh, plant, plant some galas, uh, uh, galas, uh, Brayburns, and uh, Fujis. We added Rainiers to the cherry mix and uh, planted more Bartlett's and DeAngelo's because those were working well. Dad planted them on a 15 by 6 uh, spacing, which was you know, a little more... Um, uh, pretty advanced for the time, I guess. Uh, it's a really productive block. And that, at that time, we also started selling at farmer's markets in the Seattle area. Um, my uncle came into the mix at that point, and he wanted to sell our fruit over there. That's where he lived. So somewhere in there, it dawned on, on Dad that maybe we should start selling more of this direct. And so we started making an effort to grow things to take to, uh, to farmer's markets. And, and then somewhere along the way, uh, we kind of got tired of turning people away from the farm saying we don't have a fruit stand here, you know, and realizing why aren't we just letting people buy right from us here. So, so in uh, 1999, we opened a little fruit stand here and uh, about 10 years later, we built this larger building with a fruit stand in the front and, uh, and cool, uh, two, a couple cooler rooms. And uh, once we started dealing with the people, with the public a lot, we realized, you know, they, they want more choices, more variety. So we've we've been trying variety any variety we can we can get our hands on uh, that's not you know a club or something. We we certainly have not set a date, but a couple of our blocks have uh, they do have an expiration date coming up at some point here. The old pear block is you know it's 12 by 20 and the Bartlett's never seem to fill the space. So we it's going to have to go eventually. Uh, just pears have been such a um, a nice crop for us. They've done really well for us here, and and everything is um, that. So it's kind of kind of a little bit of sentimental value there for Dad. You know, that's uh, Grandpa's block of pears, 1967. So that's that'll have to go eventually with um, the fact that those are you know 3D trees, and and uh, we can't pick them with the platform, and we can't uh, prune them with the platform, and everything everything is planted now. We got that's got to be part of the plan for sure. We've definitely at uh, this farm, you know, probably survived because we've been super cautious about borrowing, um, but also it's the reason that we're still the same 126 acres we were in the beginning. You know, for every person that gambles, you know, and makes it, there's probably two people that didn't. So, um, you know, sweat equity is what we do here. <laughs> so I'm not saying that's the right way, but maybe the safe way. And when you're, when you're intent on keeping that farm in the family, um, that, that, that might be how you have to do it. We have a lot we're trying to get done and, and uh, it's not always successful when you're spread too thin. So uh, rather than trying to do too many things, not as well as you'd like, I, I would, I'm hoping to uh, get some more help this year and try to do things do things better. For those that are getting started that um, like we are really, you know, if you look at history, we are in a particularly, um, uh, in a really good time to be starting out farming in the, res in the regards to uh, the resources available on how to do it. And between uh, the internet and extension, you know, you can just Call, call up professors and they'll oftentimes they'll talk to you you know they they want their work to make it to the field they don't want it to stay on the shelf of the extension office they want it to get applied on a big scale and save save everyone uh, save everyone's farms you know from and uh, save save resources save time save money you know keep us competitive and that's all that's what they do and it's easier than ever to get that information I think so on top of that, I think in the tree fruit industry and certainly in Washington that like people are not um, afraid to, to give you pointers or to mentor you or, you know, not, not every industry has that, but I think we're really lucky to have, to have that. Um,